Imagine standing on the edge of a windswept plateau 50,000 years ago. The cold bites at your skin, and the only light comes from a flickering fire inside a cave behind you. All around, shadows loom. Ancient forests, packs of wolves, mammoths roaming the frost-bitten plains. But the most dangerous creature of all doesn't howl or roar. It walks upright, it thinks, it plans. This was a world where two types of humans roamed the Earth. Two species sharing a fragile planet. Homo sapiens, our direct ancestors, and Neanderthals, their powerful Ice Age cousins. For a brief, burning moment in time, their paths overlapped. And when they did, the question that has haunted scientists, philosophers, and storytellers for generations emerges. Could the Neanderthals have defeated Homo sapiens? This is not just a question of brute force or survival. It's a question that cuts to the very core of our species. What made us survive while they vanished? Could history have taken another route? What if it had? In this documentary, we'll journey into the deep past, where the line between beast and man blurred. We'll uncover who the Neanderthals really were, not the brutish cavemen of old cartoons, but skilled hunters, expert toolmakers, and perhaps even poets. We'll place them side by side with early modern humans and pit their strengths, minds, and cultures against one another. From weapons to weather, from DNA to diplomacy, we'll explore every angle of this prehistoric rivalry. And by the end, you'll be able to answer for yourself. Was it fate? Was it luck? Or were we just better killers? Let's begin. To understand the nature of this ancient rivalry, we first need to know our contenders. The Neanderthals, or Homo neanderthalensis, were not our ancestors, but our evolutionary cousins. They appeared around 400,000 years ago and thrived across Ice Age Europe, from the Atlantic coast of Portugal to the freezing steppes of Siberia. They were forged by a world of cold and chaos, a land of glaciers, megafauna, and survival on the edge. Physically, they were striking, stocky and muscular with broad chests and powerful limbs. Neanderthals were built for strength and endurance. Their skulls were distinct. Low foreheads, prominent brow ridges, and large nasal cavities to warm the frigid air they breathe. Their brains were as large as ours, sometimes larger, though shaped differently. But their world was more than just strength. Archaeological evidence reveals they were capable of remarkable things. They created tools with surprising complexity, hunted large game with coordinated strategy, and perhaps most controversially, they buried their dead. In Shanidar Cave, Iraq, a Neanderthal skeleton was found sprinkled with pollen from flowers, suggesting ritual or mourning. Another in La Chapelle aux Saints, France, showed signs of long-term disability, hinting at a social group that cared for its wounded. They crafted spears, wore animal hides, and used fire. In some sites, they even left behind traces of symbolic behavior, perforated shells, pigments like ochre, and possible carvings. These were not mindless savages. They were survivors, thinkers, perhaps even artists. Neanderthals lived in small, tight-knit groups. Their lives were harsh, but structured. They had to know the landscape intimately, move with the seasons, track herds, and avoid the many dangers of Ice Age Europe. Every day was a test of survival, and they passed that test for hundreds of thousands of years. But around 60,000 years ago, a new challenger entered their domain, and everything changed. Homo sapiens, our species, emerged in Africa roughly 300,000 years ago. But it wasn't until about 70,000 years ago that they began to migrate in large numbers into Eurasia. That migration would become a turning point, not just for them, but for the fate of every other human species on Earth. Physically, Homo sapiens were leaner and more gracile than Neanderthals. They had higher foreheads, smaller brow ridges, and rounder skulls. But their most defining features were not in bone, but in behavior. They were innovators. Where Neanderthals tended to stick to tradition, sapiens constantly experimented. They created a wider variety of tools, crafted bone needles and fishing hooks, and built shelters out of wood and hide. They painted elaborate images on cave walls, created figurines from ivory and stone, and developed complex systems of trade and communication. 
Language may have been their greatest weapon. With it, they could coordinate hunts, share ideas, and preserve knowledge. They formed larger social groups bound not just by blood, but by belief, myth, and symbol. This ability to imagine, plan, and tell stories might have given Homo sapiens an edge no other species could match. When they entered Europe, they were likely awestruck by what they saw, a frozen continent already home to an ancient people. And for several thousand years, the two species coexisted. But coexistence doesn't mean peace. In the next chapter, we compare their tools, their minds, and the technologies they wielded in the long struggle for survival. Tools are more than objects. They are extensions of the mind. In this chapter, we compare the technologies each species developed to survive and perhaps dominate. Neanderthals relied on what archaeologists call the Mousterian tool tradition. Their tools were primarily flint-based, shaped using a method known as the Lavalois technique. This technique required careful planning, involving the creation of a core from which shaped flakes were struck. The results were efficient, reusable cutting tools ideal for butchering meat, scraping hides, and woodworking. Their spears were strong and heavy, designed for close-range thrusting, a hint that Neanderthal hunting often involved ambush tactics. But these tools, while effective, remained relatively unchanged over tens of thousands of years. Neanderthals valued mastery and continuity over innovation. In contrast, Homo sapiens brought with them a technological revolution. Their blades were lighter, sharper, and more varied. They used bone, antler, and ivory in addition to stone. They developed projectile weapons, including the atlatl, a spear thrower that increased range and accuracy. This allowed them to hunt from a distance, reducing danger and increasing success. Sapiens also made specialized tools, bone needles for sewing fitted clothing, fish hooks for river survival, and containers for food storage. This complexity gave them flexibility. They could adapt their gear for deserts, forests, or icy tundra. Their toolkits were modular, experimental, and evolving. If survival was a game of engineering, then Sapiens were the more versatile engineers. In a direct technological showdown, they held the advantage in range, efficiency, and adaptability. The brain is the most mysterious weapon of all. Both species had large brains, in fact, Neanderthals had slightly larger average cranial capacity. But size isn't everything. The structure and usage of those brains differed significantly. Neanderthal brains appear to have been more dedicated to vision and motor control, helpful for navigating rugged terrain and coordinating physical tasks. Sapiens, by contrast, seem to have devoted more brain space to frontal regions associated with decision-making, social interaction, and imagination. This could help explain why sapiens develop symbolic art, abstract thinking, and long-term planning. Cave art, like that in Chauvet and Lascaux, isn't just beautiful. It's evidence of minds that could conceive metaphors, rituals, and possibly even religion. Language is the biggest wild card. Neanderthals had the FOXP2 gene associated with speech and the anatomical structures necessary for vocalization. They almost certainly communicated vocally. But was it language like ours? Sapiens may have had more complex grammar, enabling the transmission of nuanced ideas, hypothetical scenarios, and communal myths. This wasn't just about communication, it was about cooperation. The ability to coordinate large groups, pass on stories, and teach strategies gave sapiens immense social power. Culture became a weapon. Stories taught children how to survive. Myths bound tribes together, Rituals built trust. In this realm, sapiens had the edge. Survival is never just about competition. It's also about coping with nature. The Neanderthals were Ice Age specialists. They thrived in cold climates, exploiting the unique ecosystem of mammoths, reindeer, and giant bison. Their bodies were adapted to the cold, shorter limbs to conserve heat, and robust builds to store energy. But this specialization came with risks. When the climate shifted rapidly around 40,000 years ago, ecosystems changed, megafauna declined, forests replaced grasslands. Neanderthals found themselves increasingly boxed in. Homo sapiens were generalists. 
They came from Africa, adapted to savannas, and learned to exploit a wide range of environments. They spread into rainforests, coasts, tundras, and highlands. They hunted a greater variety of animals and gathered diverse plant foods. Their mobility and dietary flexibility gave them a buffer against environmental shocks. While Neanderthals struggled to adapt, sapiens expanded. In this domain, Homo sapiens weren't better at surviving one place, they were better at surviving everywhere. For thousands of years, Neanderthals and Homo sapiens coexisted in Europe and the Near East. What happened during those encounters? Archaeological sites like Grote Mandarin in France and Bacho Kiro in Bulgaria show overlapping occupations, sometimes with only a few years between them. This suggests not a sudden invasion, but a slow, complex dance of replacement, adaptation, and sometimes cohabitation. There is evidence of interbreeding. Most non-African humans today carry 1-2% to 2 Neanderthal DNA. These weren't just enemies. They were, at times, lovers. But other signs point to violence. Some Neanderthal skeletons bear trauma consistent with weapon strikes. Neanderthal populations began to decline rapidly after sapiens arrived. Whether through direct conflict, competition for resources, or disease introduction, Homo sapiens seemed to have replaced Neanderthals wherever they went. Not instantly, but inevitably. In this clash of species, the tide turned toward the more flexible, the more numerous, the more cooperative. But what if history had turned out differently? Imagine a world where Neanderthals survived where two species of humans shared the planet, one robust and rooted in tradition, the other agile and imaginative. Could Neanderthals have won the evolutionary race? Possibly under different circumstances. If climate shifts had been less severe, if sapiens had arrived later, if a deadly pathogen hadn't struck. In such a world, perhaps Neanderthals might have absorbed Homo sapiens or they might have formed separate nations, distinct cultures, even coexisted in uneasy alliances. Science fiction has toyed with this idea for decades, but it's more than fiction. It's a reminder that evolution is not destiny, it's contingency, a different roll of the dice and the world might have looked very different. The Neanderthals are gone, but did they truly lose? A piece of them lives on in us in our DNA, in our immune systems, even in some physical traits. They didn't vanish completely. They merged. Perhaps the real story isn't one of victory and defeat, but of fusion, of two species that collided, clashed, and ultimately mingled. Their extinction still teaches us about resilience, about adaptation, about the fragility of even the strongest species in the face of change, and it forces us to look inward. If we too face a world in flux, climate chaos, resource competition, pandemics, will we adapt or will we follow the same path? The story of Neanderthals and Homo sapiens is not just a prehistoric tale, it's a mirror. It shows us who we were, who we are, and who we might become. Could Neanderthals have defeated Homo sapiens? Perhaps. In some ways, they already did. Their genes walk with us. Their story lives in our bones. Their disappearance is a warning and a legacy. The Ice Age ended, but the struggle to survive, to adapt, and to understand one another continues. And in that struggle, we are all still evolving.